In this video, I'm going to go over the progress on my Steam game, along with an overview of how each element works. Trading cards, scenarios, performance improvements, and more. By the way, next month there's going to be Unite Copenhagen, which is a Unity conference with lots of interesting talks about all kinds of Unity features, as well as looking into what's coming in the future. I've been invited by Unity to attend, and if you're planning on going, you can use this coupon code to get 20% off the ticket price. Alright, let's begin! So a lot of great progress these past few weeks, the game is really coming along nicely. There's still a lot to be done, but I've gotten to the point where sometimes I go in for a quick test and end up playing for 20 minutes, so that's usually a good sign. All the various systems are starting to come together into a cohesive experience with nice progression. If you want, you can pick up the game right now on Early Access, or just add it to your wishlist and you'll be notified for the full release on September 2nd. And if you do get the game, please make sure to write a review since those help the game get more visibility as well as providing valuable feedback. Alright, let's look at some elements I've been working on. Here's the first of the Steam features and one of the most important ones, the trading cards. Trading cards are always stressful for me to make since I'm not an artist, but I think I managed to make some great ones. The cards are based on each of the game modes in the game and I think they'll look quite nice. So there are 6 trading cards to collect, with the usual 5 badges plus foil, 10 emoticons and 3 profile backgrounds. That's the first of the Steam features done, now next week I still have to work on adding achievements, cloud, workshop and others, so a lot of work still to be done. In terms of progress on the game itself, I finally managed to get almost everything set up for multiple different scenarios. Each of them has a slightly different visual and build area, along with different guest preferences, research and so on. The scenarios are how the game handles progression. So on the first scenario, the player will go through the tutorial and deal with some very simple guests, essentially they will enjoy pretty much every building. Then on the next scenario, the guests become more picky about exactly what they like, so what specific arena type, with a specific layout, size and so on. So there are a lot of elements that make each scenario unique with increasing difficulty. Also one new addition is the visual expansion of the build area. Now, until right now, the map never changed, so visually it was tough to actually see where you could build. But right now, the visuals on the outside perfectly match the valid building area. So here I can easily see how far I can build, and then I can do some research. Research the expanded build area, and when I do, there you go, it expanded, and here on the second scenario, it expands to the left side. So now there it is, the visual matches the actual build area. Now expand again, and the visual expands, and expand a third time, and the visual expands some more. So now it's very easy to see where I can build. How the scenarios are completed is through the objectives. So over here, the scenario objectives. Now each scenario has a set of objectives, like you must reach a certain park rating, or have a certain amount of guests in the park, and so on. When the player completes all the objectives, then he can move on to the next scenario. So this has a nice goal that differs per each different scenario. Now one of the things that I still want to implement is some sort of degree of completion. So if you complete the basic objectives, you can move to the next scenario if you want, or you can also stick around in the same scenario, continue playing your current game and try to achieve bonus objectives. That would give the player more flexibility for how they want to play. One very important change I've made in the last update was modifying the month time to be longer. So here the clock goes up much slower even on super fast speed. The reason for this decision was due to how so many of the stats from the game are sorted in terms of month. So for example here on the overlays for the revenue, it shows the total and then for each particular month. The more complex buildings actually take quite a while to complete the entire behavior, so in here it takes quite a while for them to all set up, all the guests go in, all they fight and so on. So previously they were going just once per month. The result of that is that the per month data was very inconsistent. So the longer month allows for each monthly value to be more smooth, which helps understand if things are going well or badly. Now if you're interested in how the code works, here it is. Here is the clock class. As you can see, it's pretty simple. It is based on the time tick system in order to keep track of time. I've covered this system in another video, so check that out how it works and how it can be useful. So the time tick system won't tick on every time tick. And here I just have a bunch of functions to convert a specific time tick into various days, months and years. So in here, in order to make the month longer, all I did was modify this constant. So it used to be 1000 ticks per month and now it's 1700 ticks per month. 
So that's all I need to change in order to make each month longer and then the static event works the same as always so everything else works flawlessly. Related to the new month is the new month stats window. So let's wait for the month to complete and after October is done. And here we go. And yep, there it is, our new nice month stats window. So this shows some basic stats related to the previous month. So you can easily see the changes to see if you're doing better or worse. So in here, for example, 16% improvement on the revenue, 11% down on the guests entertained, and one increased on the park rating. It also shows the most positive and most negative thought. So you can easily identify what your guests are complaining about so you can fix and improve. And over here, the assistant tip, which is something that I really want to add. In Tycoon games, one of the game design problems is that it's always difficult to teach the player absolutely everything since there are so many systems at work. In order for the tutorial to be short and brief, I have to focus on only teaching the absolute essentials. So this nice little tip every month really helps the player give more tips on how to improve and explain how each system works. There is also a new guests window. It shows a bunch of stats for the guests, like how many are in the park, how many have visited total, the average happiness, and so on. So that's nice, but more importantly is here on the right. These are the guest preferences for the guests on this particular scenario. So every guest that gets spawned has these particular preferences. So for example, there will be no guests spawned where their favorite building is the dual showdown. So using this information, you can decide how best to build your park. So in this case, make an arena of any type other than team deathmatch and make sure that it's a size small. Now, the guests still go to all arenas and buildings, but they prioritize the ones that best match up with their preferences. And if all the preferences match, they all love the arena and are willing to pay more. Another new window is over here, the new research window. This one is much better, much more clear compared to the old version. So the buttons are bigger, the icons are more easily seen, and you can easily see which ones have already been unlocked and which ones need to be unlocked. The tooltips also help clarify the reason why, for example, this research is locked, which is not available in this scenario. So this one is already locked, this one can be locked, and these are not available. So you can see that the research progression is tied to the scenario progression. Now down here, you can see the new addition, the advertising system. I'm still working on it, but the goal is to provide a use for the laboratory when all the research of a particular scenario has been done. So after you research all of the available research, you can get your workers busy doing advertising. The result is an increase in the number of guests. Obviously, each of them becomes more expensive and has a higher effect. Here is the advertising class. As you can see, the various types, flyers, newspaper, and TV. The cost for each of them. How many workers are needed in order to start doing that advertising. So for example, in order to do adverts on TV, you need to have six workers working on the laboratory. And over here is the guest bonus per each type. The guest bonus is used over here on the guest spawner class. As you can see, each scenario has a maximum guest spawn amount. And how many guests are spawned is dependent on the park rating multiplied by that maximum. So over here on level one, if you have a park with a hundred rating, then you will have 300 guests going into your park. On level three, a hundred rating will equal 500 guests. So that's the base for the maximum guest spawn amount, and then you add the advertising guest bonus, which again, also multiplied by the park rate. So here on the guest bonus, you can see the TV has a bonus of 200. So in theory, if you were on level three with a perfect park rating and TV advertising working, you would get 500 plus 200, so 700 maximum guests on your park. So this is a great new feature, new tool to keep things engaging in the late game. Now, once again, I have improved ground performance. So previously, the game would hang whenever you place the ground. So as I place here, the game would essentially hang for 500 milliseconds. And right now, as you can see, there's pretty much no hang whatsoever because the whole thing is being done in just 20 milliseconds. So that's a massive improvement. The way I achieved this performance boost was due to how the ground tiles are displayed. Over here in the editor, you can see that the ground tile is a dynamic mesh filled up with dozens of quads. So with the wireframe enabled, you can see each of them is a different quad. So previously, the issue with the system was I was adding each quad to the mesh and updating it one by one. So essentially, it would add this quad, update the mesh, add this one, update, add this one, update, and so on and so on. Now, as you might know, it's very slow to actually update the mesh and send the data to the GPU. So what I did is first just work with simple arrays and fill them up with the necessary data. So over here on the upgrade ground visuals function, 
I first set up my mesh arrays, so the vertices, UVs and triangles. Then I cycle through all the ground objects. And here previously I was adding it to the mesh for every single one, whereas right now I'm simply adding it to the mesh arrays. So on this cycle it goes through every single ground mesh and fills up these arrays. And then at the end when all of them have been filled up with the correct data, I finally update the mesh on the GPU. So the end result is a pretty massive performance improvement and the game should no longer hang when adding more ground tiles. As you can see everything is smooth and works great. One small thing I've added is that the arenas now support all sizes. So previously my idea was to limit the sizes. So for example a dual arena could not be large and a battle royale arena could not be small. This was an interesting idea but just ended up with adding unnecessary confusion. So with the addition of the guest preferences, it was better just to let all arenas have all sizes. So this is another example of those tiny game design problems that can only be solved through iteration. In the previous video, I covered how I made the transporters carry multiple weapons, which really helps keep the game going and reduces overall wait time. Now another great improvement I've added was merging of various arena states. So previously, the arenas would wait to fully complete each state. So the guests would go in, they start fighting, they finish the battle, then they would go to leave. Once all of them left, then the workers would finally go in and start doing the cleanup. And once the cleanup was done, then they would do the setup and everything starts over. Now the change is that all of those three tasks now happen at the same time. So as soon as the arena is done, so there it is, the bomb is going to be diffused. And as you can see, now they will all start to leave. At the same time as they are leaving, the workers are cleaning up the arena. And at the same time as they are cleaning up, they are also setting up, grabbing the new items and placing them on the same position. So all of those tasks are now happening at once, which makes everything go much smoother with much less waiting time. So that coupled with the longer month really helps to keep all of the stats more smooth over time. So that's what I've been working on lately. Some of these features are already live on the current version and others I'm still working on. All in all, I'm quite pleased with how the game is turning out. It's looking quite nice and everything works great. So I'm really looking forward to having the final release. If you want, you can pick up the game right now on early access or just add it to your wishlist and you'll be notified for the full release on September 2nd. And if you do get the game, please make sure you write a review since those help the game get more visibility as well as providing some valuable feedback. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials and devlogs. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.